everybody. Let's try a few examples of these first order circuits. So I just want to point out, this is the natural response, which means we're opening the switch. If you close the switch, that's going to be the step response. And just foreshadowing, when you open the switch, it goes like that, it decays. And then you wait a long time. When you open the switch, it goes like this. Okay, so we'll do that next time. All right, so for this one, we say this switch has been closed for a long time. So what does that mean? Everything is constant. So the current here is going here, 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 everywhere, right? Like this. But then when you have current going through a, an inductor that's constant, remember the voltage across an inductor looks like this. So when the current is constant, the time derivative is zero. So the voltage across the inductor is zero, which means it behaves like a short circuit, like it's just a wire. That also means it hogs all the current. Nobody else gets any current. That's before we open the switch. Okay, so the inductor is taking all 20 amps of current. So we have this inductor taking all 20 amps of the current when the switch is closed. When we open the switch, then the current through this inductor will change, and then it's connected to that resistor, and then these two in parallel. Uh, let me draw it like this. Just like that. Okay, so what is the equivalent resistance right here? These two in parallel, 10 and 40. Okay, so 10 is like 4 over 40, so 5 over 40, and then take the reciprocal, it was 8. Okay, so that's like 8 over here and 2 over here is like 10. So the equivalent resistance is just 10. Okay, so the current through the inductor is, we can just look up that formula we derived last time, I naught e to the minus r over l t. And initially, we just said it's hogging all the current, so that's 20 amps. Okay, and then r over l, 10 over 2, 10 ohms over 2 henrys is 5, so r over l is 5. So what's the time constant? The time constant is the reciprocal of whatever is right here. So in this example, the time constant would be the reciprocal, 1 over 5, right? So 0.2 seconds. So how long would you have to wait until this reaches some steady state value? Around 5 time constants. Right, so you'd have to wait about longer than one second. Okay, now let's find the current here going through the 40 ohm resistor. So if it's this here, let me just draw this again. So it's here, here, here. We want the current here. So how about I draw this backwards? Like if I draw this as minus IL. And then it, you can see how this is a current divider. So the current here, I'll call that the current in the 40 ohm resistor is a divider, right? So this minus IL and then the divider. This divided by this plus this would be the current here. The current here would be minus IL times 40 over 
10 plus 40. Okay, so that's, uh, let's see, 10 over, so that's one-fifth. So one-fifth of this would be, oh, with the minus sign, minus 4e to the minus 5t. Okay, so that's the current, so that's part B already. Part C, what's the voltage? Let me write this as a function of time just to be explicit. Okay, and then if we want the voltage um, here, then just Ohm's law, IR, so just this times R, which is 40. So this times 40. So minus 4 times 40, 160. All right, so that's uh, part C, part D. How much energy stored in the inductor dissipate in the 10 ohm resistor? So that's this one. So we need the energy here. So notice that, let's see, we got the current, so we got things here on the wrong resistor. We need it here. So the current here for the 10 ohm, it's the same voltage uh, current divider equation, 40 over 10 plus 40. Okay, so then that would be minus 16 e to the minus 5t. And then the voltage here actually is the same as the voltage here. The voltage across the 10 ohm resistor is the same as the voltage across the 40 because they're in parallel. Right, same. Which means we have the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor, the current through the 10 ohm resistor. So if you want the power for the 10 ohm resistor, just multiply these two together. Okay, so let's see, this times this is 256 and then another zero, and then this times this, e to the minus 10t. Okay, so that's power, but we wanted energy. So we wanna integrate dt And right, look, let's say the power looks like this. We want to integrate, meaning what's the area of all this? So we want the total energy. So let's integrate from zero to how long does this go? Forever, right? So we have to integrate to infinity. All right, so 25, 60. So e to the minus 10t integral would be one over, oh, minus one over 10 e to the minus 10 t from zero to infinity. So if we evaluate that, it looks like, like this. Okay, so that is zero and this is one. Okay, and then there's a minus sign here, so then that minus sign and this minus sign. And that's it, joules, there we go. 256 joules absorbed by this resistor. How much, and we want the percent, how much was initially stored in the inductor? It was, you can just look up the formula for the inductor. It's the one that looks like this. Okay, and then, well, we want it at t equal to zero. So this would be I naught. So that's just one half L I naught squared. What was L? Two. Two Henry's. I naught was all of the current, 20 amps. Okay, so let's see. So, oh, so that's one, so 400. So there you go, the percent, that divided by that. Okay, let's try another example. So here's another one. So now we have a, an RC circuit. And okay, so when the switch is over here, let's ignore this. So if we wait a long time, everything is constant, which means the voltage 
across the capacitor is constant, and you know that the current is C dV dt. If the voltage is constant, the derivative of a constant is zero, so the current here is zero, which is in series with this resistor. So the current across the resistor is zero. The current through the resistor is zero, which means the voltage across would be zero, according to Ohm's law. So if the voltage across the resistor is zero, that means the voltage here is the same as the voltage here. It's hogging all of the voltage. This resistor gets nothing. This capacitor takes all the voltage, which is 100 volts. So when the switch is here, the capacitor is up at 100 volts. And then when we switch over to the other side, we can ignore this. And then we just have a capacitor sitting at 100 volts. And then it goes to these. All right, so this is sitting at 100 volts initially. Oh, I'll just label that. Okay, and then what is the voltage? You can just look up the formula. It's V naught E to the minus 1 over RC T. And V naught we just said was 100. RC, I'm not sure yet. What is the equivalent resistance here? So these two in parallel, 1 over 240, 1 over 60. So that's like 4 over 240, so 5 over 240. Uh, I think I got a calculator. Okay, so that 240 over 5 is 48. Okay, so this in parallel would be 48k, and then there's 32k over here. So those two in series would be um, 80k. Okay, so then RC is 80k times 0.5 microfarads. Okay, so that's 80 times 10 to the 3, and then that's 0.5 times 10 to the minus 6. So we multiply that. So that's uh, 0 0.04. Okay, so RC is 0 0.04. That's the time constant. So then 1 over RC is the reciprocal, so that's uh, 25. So there we go. There's the voltage across the capacitor. The time constant is the reciprocal of this, 0 0.04 seconds. And now we want the voltage here. Let me just redraw that. So oh, we can just look here. Okay, the voltage here across the 240k oh, resistor is the same as the voltage here because these are in parallel. So we want the voltage here. And you can see, look, it's just a voltage divider. So the voltage here, I'll call this V just a voltage divider, so VC and then 48K over 48 plus 32. So that is 48 over 80, so let's see. Okay, so that's 48 over 80 times 100 would be 60. Okay, so we got the voltage here as a function of time. Let me write that explicitly. Okay, and now what is the current here? Just use Ohm's law, V over R. All right, so I, just V over R, so just divide by um, 240. So just Divide by 240, oh, 240k. All right, so now we got the current, and that's part C. If you want the total energy, 
um, here. So then we need the current here. Oh, I just realized I solved for the current in the wrong place. So part C, we needed the current here, not here. So then I wouldn't divide by 240k, I would divide by 60k. Okay, so that would be the current for the 60k resistor. Now if we want the energy for the 60k resistor, we can get the power for, I'm going to label it 60. The power for the 60k resistor would just be the voltage times the current. Let's just multiply that together. Okay, so it looks like we have... 1 over a thousand, so that's like 60 over a thousand, we don't need that many zeros, there we go, so it's like, I'll just leave it like that, I'll just write 0 0.06, e to the, and then this times this, minus 50t, okay, so that's power, and then if you want energy just integrate dt from zero to infinity and that's going to be the energy All right so just integrate that then minus one over 50 e to the minus 50 t from zero to infinity if you evaluate that like this e to the minus infinity is zero so like that and then there's a minus one and a minus. So there you go. That many joules. Okay. All right. So that's helpful. Let me know if you have questions and I'll see you on the next video.